It's the Brian and Kendra Show with Brian Cook and Kendra Cox of Keller Williams Realty Elite. I am Kendra Cox. I'm Brian Cook. Between the two of us, we have over 30 years of experience. Sharing real estate tips and advice right here on Classic Hits 107.3. Hey, we are back today. We're going to talk about the Brian Kendra Show. And we got our first phone call in a while about a short sale. So we thought we would kind of bring people to date on that again, on how short sales work, what they are, why they do them. And also bring to people's attention the um, government's ploy to get us to get our economy back on track. Okay, so I, well, you're, what you're saying, during COVID, yep. there were a lot of COVID mm. relief programs that came out. Um, and some of them, like they looked super attractive at yep. the time. Um, unfortunately, what happens often, not just with the COVID relief programs, but with a lot of the different types of forbearance, and we talked about this probably a year, year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happens is at the end of that time of the relief, then all of a sudden you're smacked with some huge some huge fines or fees or, oh my gosh, I have to pay this to catch back up. Maybe it's not a fee. Maybe it's legitimate things that you owe. And I'm not saying fees are not legitimate, but um, my point being, mm-hmm. it, it's terrifying sometimes to open up the mail and see what you've got coming. So um, we visited with somebody this week, and, and Brian and I talked – like, it really kind of, it. this is when it pulls at your heartstrings. Like, I don't know what else to say, except that, like, the people part of our business, it, I mean, it makes us want to, it makes us hard to, I can't sleep at night. Like, yeah. these kinds of things keep me up thinking, oh, my gosh, this sucks. Okay. These these are people just like me, good credit, good job, have a difficult situation, um, think that they have signed up for the right program to help them get out of their difficult situation and end up a little bit deeper than what they were to begin with. And it's terrifying, and I hate it. And so then, and in our conversation with this particular person, um, credit is still good. Mm-hmm. There's still a chance, if we can help sell the house quickly, um, that we can help them to go ahead and pay their, their fees, pay off the house, move forward, and, and not lose any steam with credit and being able to still be credit worthy for the next home. But what if we can't? So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the what if we can't. So we're going to talk about a short sale. What in the world is a short sale? <clears throat> means it goes really fast, right? Yeah. It's not a very short time frame. That ain't that the truth. That's for sure. But what was your longest <clears throat> short sale? I don't know. I know I had a six-month one. I don't think I've had one that long. I was new. I was new. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I've had, yeah, I've had some IRS, IRS ones that take over a year. I've had some of them, but not a short sale. So... Short sales usually, and there's a system behind them. There's a lot of paperwork behind them. They, they want yes, there is. They want to justify that hey, this is your only option. So first of all, a short sale is where the bank lender is taking a short on what is owed. So we are shorting them. So if you owe a hundred thousand and they get ninety, we shorted them ten thousand. You short sold the house. So. <clears throat> um, so and I've done some short sales where it was crazy, like three hundred thousand dollar house, and they took one hundred eighty. Like, right? Oh my right. gosh, this is crazy. So, <clears throat> so, uh, so back to the plan from COVID relief mm-hmm. deal. A lot of you took it, so you might start reviewing your paperwork, checking some things out, because your your interest doesn't stop rolling, your taxes don't stop rolling, your insurance doesn't stop rolling, and they're going to tack on some fees for doing the forbearance. Right. So, so all of that adds up and quickly. has to be paid out in some way, shape, or form. Yes. So they're going to give you some options. Yeah. Which so. I was, these options blew my mind. On the forbearance plan, this one I, we read, option one was to pay the back. So I'm just going to use like a uh, close number. So uh, let's say they owed 150000 They had about... Twelve, six, seventeen thousand dollars in back interest, taxes, mm-hmm. and insurance, and fees. So, when I calculated that out, there was probably three or four thousand dollars worth of fees on top of taxes, insurance, and interest. Right. <clears throat> okay. Then, option two was um, so option was just pay the pay the fifteen or sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars. Option two would be sell it. And get out, but you still have to pay all of the money, all sixteen or seventeen thousand right. plus what you already owe. Mm-hmm. 
Third option, they were willing to reduce the interest and refinance the house out 40 years. Okay. 40. So that part right there, which I guess it works, but it, I mean, that made my, that put a, that put a huge pit in my stomach. I guess which, granted, time. I immediately mm-hmm. thought of it like doing seven years on your vehicle. And if you do that, you're upside down. Like you're mm-hmm. upside down every time you cannot do that and have good equity in your vehicle. And I guess I kind of equated it. And it's not exactly the same. It's not the same. But it's, but still, so I this, mean, this you're is paying based hardly on, anything on principal if you're doing a 40-year loan. So after, like. You're hardly pay anything in a 30-year. Right. So after I was thinking about it overnight, like, because it okay, bothered me. Oh, you up too? It did. It bothered me. Cause, <laughs> I'm telling you, it bothered here's, me Here's too. what I think they're doing. Overall, in the United States, the appreciation rates of residential real estate are outlandish. They are going through the roof. So, like Austin, Texas has a Okay, 60%, if I remember correctly through NAR, 60% appreciation rate over the last two or three years. So if you paid 100000 for a house three years ago, it's worth one sixty or seventy now. Like, oh my gosh. So if you were in a 40-year mortgage and you're not making any headway, in California you can get 40 and 50-year mortgages because you're, not, you're just barely paying interest taxes and insurance. They don't care because the rate of int- appreciation on the houses is so much. That when you go to sell it, you've appreciated and you can get out. It's no big deal. So I think they're using the same formulas for Woodward, Oklahoma. And Woodward, Oklahoma is not like... Not the same. Like, unfortunately, we're more of a hovering town. Like Right. Property values do increase if you increase the value. If you, you know, do your updates, keep things updated, keep things fresh, keep things clean, keep mm-hmm. things up. I mean, you just, you do your normal routine maintenance. Your house will appreciate. <clears throat> Some houses we have sold from... They bought them in 2010. Ten years later, they're worth the same amount of money. Right. It's because back in 07, 08, 9, 10, 11, 12, Man. the market was crazy. It and, was. And you sometimes in 17, we had seven houses. 17, 2007, we had 17 houses on the market. Right. You paid whatever it took to get into a house. Right. And so sometimes you paid $100 square foot for a 40 year old house, where now that house is still worth $100 square foot. You just. Right. You, had to, you bought yourself a place to live for 10 years. And the problem with where we are is that we are so fluid. I mean, mm-hmm. we are always up and down. So 7 and 8 were insane. Yep. 9 and 10. 10, I had to get a real job. I was not happy about that. Worst and year it, ever. But right there, at the same time that I took my real job, finally, all of a sudden, we had offers. I remember I was talking to you on the phone because I was still playing a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you said I wrote an offer, and I said I'm part-time, and I wrote two. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do much with them, but I wrote them. <laughs> All right, so point being, though, we're so up and down, up and down. After the tornado, things got crazy in Woodward. 13, 14, and 15 were absolutely nuts. Yep. I'm not sure that we've met those same prices again yet. So, so no, our not. market is just different here than everywhere else. So, right. so, so 40 year mortgage this doesn't make sense. Of the crisis relief with COVID, mm. it, it doesn't fit all of us. And so, we've got to pay attention now. So that we right. don't hurt ourselves worse. We, I mean, we want to talk to you. We don't charge you to talk to you about that stuff. We want to help you review your paperwork. Yes. We looked at his paperwork. We're going to do everything we can to help them um, get out of the house. We discussed, here's what we need to keep it. Do you want to keep it? No, I don't want to keep it. Okay. You need to sell it. Here's our options to sell it. Luckily, they give us 90 right. days to sell the house before he has to make a real decision. Mm-hmm. So, which is 90 days in Woodward's are really good. Our average days on the market we discussed earlier was 111, which is really more than it should be. So, 100. 90 days on the market gives us enough time to strategically, aggressively market that house and get him out. Right. So, options. So, that's the whole point of this entire program today is just to help you to understand um, what a short sale is, how it works. But also, if, if you'll include us quickly mm-hmm. um, before it gets too bad, before you get in too deep, let's see what we can do to help you. So, yes. um, so we're going to look at loan modification first. We're going to look to see um, if we can help you if you need to change your loan type or... or um, so in this case, if you needed to do the 30-year, if you need to do the 40-year, if you should just stay with what he was, all those different things. And you're, like, super number-wise. Mm-hmm. So so you're going at it like, well, okay, they offered you this interest rate here. You've already got this interest rate. looks to me like you'd stay here and you'd do better. Right. Or do this one and <clears throat> pay more to it. So, okay, so that's number one. Number two, if we really cannot help you to keep it and you want to keep it and you really need to sell it, then it says to, our next thing is hire a qualified team. Um, that's us. That's Kendra. <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> not by myself. This is definitely short sales are difficult. They are, and I think that we may. I think that that's where our team really does well because I'm paperwork, 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 and you are out. Fix it. 
solution. You're fixing it, and you're and you're finding a new buyer. Right. And and you are better at that. I don't know how, how many. This morning, I finally said to you, I don't even know how you have a voice. You have not stopped talking, and this is not even <laughs> being mean. This is not even like when I say it to my kids. You haven't stopped talking all day. I have not. Like you have been back to back with people. Like, Since seven fifteen this morning. I mean, I'm texting you stuff even when you're with them people like, I just need a simple yes or no answer. <laughs> no time for that. <laughs> so, so hire a qualified team. Yes. So we do. Um, 2002 is when you began. I started in 2006. Um, I went to some short sale classes and some foreclosure classes. You did as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a certified. I'm certified with something too, something, but I don't remember. That means. And so I didn't want to have to go out there with the whole initial deal. Regardless, point is. We know what we're doing. We have to relearn a little bit because I've, I've noticed they've changed some things over the past yes. few years, thankfully, because I think it's more streamlined. It's more streamlined. It's still a packet. They want to know. That, so we're going to jump to the next one. It's a short sale packet that we're going to fill out. They're going to want to know everything about you. You want to know what your assets are. They want to know how much money you've got in the bank. They want to know how much money you make. They want to see your last two years tax returns, your pay stubs. They want to see everything. They want to know that, hey, this is, you know, it's sitting on $200,000 cash. And you want to short sell your house. Right. They don't want to lose if you don't have to lose. It's, it's a business transaction. For it them. is. It absolutely is. They need to understand why they're losing money. So be ready because they they're going to ask you. It, it's harder to get a short sale than to get a loan. They're going to ask you all those questions. So be ready to produce. And then we're going to have to write letters. We're going to have to write letters. Let's why? talk about that in a second. Let's take a break. And then we'll okay. talk about what's going to be included in our packet. Okay. And we will be right back. Hey, we're back. We're talking. This is Brian Kinder Show. Um, talking about short sales. Short sales. So just a quick re- recap. A short sale is um, whenever you are in financial trouble with your mortgage, you haven't been making your payments. And so you would reach out to your mortgage company and they would um, discuss whether or not they would be willing to take less than what is owed on your property in order to release you from the obligation. Correct. And so, so because of the COVID relief thing, a lot of people are in that position. Yes. But if you're not in the COVID relief thing, they, but you basically cannot start a short sale unless you are behind on payments. Absolutely. And okay. I think there's some specific amounts of behind, like three, three months, months or something. Usually. So. Yeah. All right. So um, you would need to have this packet of things, a packet of, of identifiers to show that you truly are in hardship and that you really yes. do need this help with the short sale. <clears throat> so first thing is a hardship letter to describe your um, financial situation or why you require a short sale. Yeah. So I hear a lot job of this. Loss, job divorce, loss, mm-hmm. uh, health issues. Um, right. There's, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. And a combination of different things that uh, create that hardship. You would also need a proof of your income and your assets. So um, they're going to want to be able to see all of your bank accounts, um, your 401k, all of that kind of stuff. They're going mm-hmm. to require copies of that. Just like if you're getting a loan, it's kind of doing the same thing again. Except this time, instead of saying, I can buy the house, you're saying, I cannot keep this house. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost like it's a backward loan. Right. It's exactly what is. I don't know where that word came from, but I was trying to say exactly. Yeah. And then right. the purchase contract. So they will Wait, not. S- don't go there yet. You also have to do your. Okay. I'm not finished. Go ahead. <laughs> you also have to have copies of your federal income tax returns for the past two years. Yes. So again, just like if you're getting a loan, because it's like backwards. Backwards. All right. Next, they don't begin until you have a buyer with an offer. Yep. You need a bona fide offer, no contingency offer. They, right. They don't want it. You can have a loan contingency, but you can't right. be selling another house or. They want a pre-qualified, pre-approved letter saying that you have the money. It's well, as soon as the house is cleared, you can buy it. Right, and so that has to be included. That contract that you've accepted with your buyer. Mm-hmm. So you and your buyer have come together. You've come to terms. It won't pay off your mortgage. Then you submit that contract to your mortgage mm-hmm. company with this packet and say, "Okay, here's everything. I've got a buyer. Will you take less than what is owed?" And that's when we really start the fun. Yeah. So it's not quick. Mm-hmm. A short sale is not quick. Probably 60 to 90 days. Yes. We did a short sale, one of my very first ones. Mm-hmm. We did a short sale with an IRS tax lien. So it crazy. doesn't. It can get as crazy and unreal as you think. You might have four liens, a judgment, a IRS tax lien, and a bad bet debt. We can still navigate through all of that stuff. Everybody right. just wants paid, and everybody knows that a real estate agent can get 12 to 17% more on the property than a for sale by owner. Right. And if it's in short sale, they can get... 30 to 50% more than a sheriff's sale if it goes to the courthouse steps. Wow. So they're pushing for us to help them professionally sell that property because they think they can get the majority of their money out. So that's part of the deal. So we want to make sure that um, of all the stuff in order, we want to get the offers made as quick as we can, and we want to get to going. All right, so um, be prepared to just know that it's not going to be super quick. It's going to take some time. Um, 
the bank will take a long time to respond. They right. have to have all of the people looking through all of the stuff to verify um, if they can or cannot help us. So it's going to take a little bit of time. We we try to be upfront with the buyers, and we actually, we actually have a short sale document that is supposed to be included in our contract so that buyers understand that this won't be a quick process. Right. So what else? Um, don't expect a short sale to solve your financial problems. No. No. No, unfortunately. No. And it, it will hurt your credit some. It's and that's one of the it. things that we really want to avoid. If we can help you to sell before you get too deep, we want to help you to avoid your financial and your credit being hurt. That's right. So what else? Um, I just know it's hard out there. There's a lot of stuff going hard. on. We want to make sure it's about educating you guys. So if, if you have any questions about short sales or what do I do or, hey, I signed up for this program. How do I get out? Um, let us know. We know the lingo. We can call your lenders with you, get you in the office, sit down and go through that. Um, if you're scared that you're coming out of the deal and you want us to help with your budget, I'm, I'm a number guy. I'd love to meet with you, help you kind of set up a budget and get things kind of coordinated so you can get that squared away. So um, give us a call. Uh, stop by. Thanks for listening to the Brian Kinder Show today. We will be back next week.